Welcome back. You know, so far when we've looked at process, the only thing we've really done analytically is to do the spaghetti diagram. So what I'd like to do is move from the spaghetti diagram into what we call value analysis. And so one thing that we can do is we can start building a more structured concept. Now, when we're building concepts of how things work, we usually want to start at the highest level, the context, and understand what is the overall context of an organization. That's what the SIPOC map was giving us. The spaghetti diagram was giving us this sort of base level, what's happening at the workflow level, and we're seeing sort of all of the mess. And so really in between there, there's sort of three levels of abstraction, if you will, that we can understand when we want to graphically represent an organization. So we can see this high level business process map. Then we have a medium level, this cross-functional description. And then we have the detailed level in the flows. In many types of, of situations, we need to understand how all three of those levels work both in a vertical dimension as well as horizontally in a time dimension. One way to do this is to create a cross-functional flow diagram, which in Japan they call a makagami diagram. Makagami means scrolled rolled paper. And as you see from the PowerPoint slide, you'll see that there are a couple examples of a makagami diagram. These are like big rolls of paper that are put on the wall. And so lines are drawn to segment then the executive function from the cross function from the operational level. And at each of those levels, we see how the flow works and then how it delivers work or, or product to the next level down in the organization. And we can also see the feedback loops. This is one way for us to understand what's happening in the organization. Now, this illustrates actually a very good point. And that is when we first want to understand how to engage workers in understanding process components, we should do it not in a computer, but do it in graphics. Do it on paper. Do it with PowerPoint uh, after the fact. But use Post-its first. We know that these can be moved. We're not so committed to what the diagram is. Once we put it into PowerPoint or we put it into a graphical system, uh, such as uh, Visio, what we see is it looks much cleaner and we don't always think about all of the things that need to go in there. So when we're satisfied with this graphical view here, what we might want to do then is then convert that into PowerPoint. Now, when we're going to build this into a system and, and want to create a diagram, one of the things we should do is we should take a look at, first of all, how is this process actually progressing? So one dimension is process mapping in time. Another dimension, though, is process mapping in terms of who are the functions or individuals that are engaged in the process. We call this type of view a swim lanes diagram in Visio, or we call it a deployment diagram. So in a deployment diagram, these different roles or, or functions that we identify are actually creating different swim lanes. Each of those swim lanes describes the series of activities that that particular function is performing. We can then see, as the lines go from one level to another, the handoffs or the interrelationships among each of those functions. So we could identify uh, individual people, we could identify a software program, we could identify a database, or we can identify functional areas or processes. And then we map and show the sequence of going from one level to the next, all the way from the beginning of the process to the end. And so this is one way that we can actually understand the process diagram. When we do that sort of thing, we get a very simple understanding of the process. So here in this diagram, we can see that we have these process flows. We have decision blocks. We have names for those different steps. And then at the bottom, we have what's called a value stream. So the value stream is combining different ways of looking at how value is delivered across that process. It could be roll throughput yield, which is the output right the first time at each step in the process. It could be the difference between the actual and the theoretical cycle time, called A delta T. Or it could be the transaction cost per unit that's moving through those processes. Or, as we've done here, we could just simulate and say, this much time is value-adding, and this much time is non-value-adding. In other words, it's providing waste. So as we look at this process, this is a very simplified view of how to do a value stream analysis. However, this is sufficient for us to do all of the work that we need to do in Six Sigma. We do not need to go to all of the extra work of creating value stream maps with lots of icons and so forth, 
because that's actually work that does not actually provide value to the process of understanding the flow and what's going on in the system from an analytic perspective. So the value stream map tells us the sequence in which work is being done, it identifies the areas of responsibility, we see who's contributing what to work, and we've isolated critical decision milestones in the process. For those milestones, we might also annotate where there are measurable events. So then value is specified for the whole end-to-end -end flow for one transaction going through the process. This is how we can transfer then that one piece flow through a series of physical processes into a, if you will, graphical model of how that process is actually working. Now we can't actually include all of the details in that graphical model. So it's going to be a simplification in some respects of what's going on. And what we see is that each of the time we have a process described this way, somebody's going to have to keep it up. So if we take a look in many IT systems, if you're working in a company that has something like SAP or Oracle, you'll see there may be some of these descriptions there. And if those descriptions are not kept up to, kept up to date, then we don't understand how one process integrates with another to produce the overall value of the organization. So simplifying the process maps, making sure they integrate one map with the other as you go from one step in the process through the next, all the way through the whole system, and making sure that the measurement system is aligned so we can see the cumulative effect of this work. And that means keeping the measures simple, cycle time, transaction cost, and also in, in terms of the quality of the events, how many defects we have are right the first time through, rolled through put yield. So we're going to come back now and start saying, okay, we've understood the process flow. We understand we can get performance measures in there in terms of quality, cost, and time. Now, how do we actually analyze those statistically? Very good question. So let's talk about the statistical applications next.